just before 10 a.m. on the morning of June 11, 1963, a group of over 300 monks and nuns marched down a busy street in Saigon. Among them was a 73-year-old monk named Du, who emerged from a car at a crowded intersection and sat down in the lotus position on a cushion. Two fellow monks poured petrol over him from a five-gallon can as he chanted Namo Amida Buddha, which means return to eternal Buddha. As Du burned, a young priest repeated this word into a microphone. A Buddhist priest burned himself to death. A Buddhist priest becomes a martyr. His self-immolation was a powerful act of protest against the anti-Buddhist regime in South Vietnam at that time. The the media immediately seized upon this event, and a now iconic photograph was sent from Saigon to the Associated Press, reaching front pages around the world. However, in the midst of this critical moment, Madame Yo, Vietnam de facto first lady, made a shocking statement. She said, If the Buddhists want to have another barbecue, I will be glad to supply the gasoline. Madame Yo, who was married to President O Deng Xiang's brother, played a significant role in shaping the evolution of the United States' engagement in Vietnam. Her harsh remarks about the Buddhists earned her the infamous nickname Dragon Lady. Elegant and strong-willed, Madame Yo attracted international attention in the early 1960s. In contrast to the reserved and media conservative nature of America's First Lady, Madame Yo embraced the spotlight without hesitation. Her captivated presence graced the covers of publications like Time and Life magazines. Madame Yo, originally named Chen Nexuan, came from a privileged and influential background. Her father held a high-ranking position in the Vietnamese government. Born in 1924 in the Tokyo Protectorate of Hanoi, Vietnam, which was under French rule, Madame Yo grew up in a family with noble lineage. Her father belonged to a noble family, and her grandfather was the governor general of Tolkien, and her grandmother had a noble ancestry as well. On her mother's side, her grandfather was a prominent scholar and lecturer to the emperor during the Wen Dynasty, while her grandmother was the granddaughter of the third emperor of the Wen Dynasty. Madame Yu was the second child in the family with an older sister and a younger brother. She attended the prestigious Lycée Albert Saro, a French-speaking school where students came from noble families in Vietnam. Although her study did not go well, she excelled in ballet and piano. Her mother hoped to arrange a suitable marriage for her, but Madame Yu insisted on marrying Ngo Ding Yu, who was 14 years her senior. Ngo Ding Yu came from a modest family background. His father served as a minister. They were a Catholic family, and Ngo Ding Yu's older brother were involved in politics. Ngo Ding Yu, who had studied in Paris and returned to Vietnam after World War II, met Madame Yu while working at the library. Despite initial objections from Madame Yu's mother due to age difference. The 19-year-old Madame Yu insisted on marrying him in 1943. She did not believe in love, but wanted to leave her family and marry as soon as possible. After their marriage, Madame Yu converted to her husband's Catholic faith, abandoning Buddhism. In 1940, France surrendered to Germany, and Japan occupied Vietnam. In 1945, Madame Yu gave birth to a daughter. That same year, Japan surrendered in World War II, and the Vietnamese king was dethroned. France sought to regain control of Vietnam and supported the establishment of the state of Vietnam, while the Democratic Republic of Vietnam was also established to oppose it. The former leaders of the French colonial government were captured and forced to support the new government. Ngo Ding Yu's brother, who opposed the new government, was killed and the family had to flee. Madame Yu and her daughter were captured and sent to the countryside, but she managed to escape to Salai 
wife and reunite with her husband in a more peaceful area. In 1949 and 1952, Madame Yu gave birth to two more children. During this time, her husband started to engage in politics and developed a new doctrine based on anti-communism, combining Catholicism with Western liberalism. Together with his brother, who had fled to the USA, they covertly organized an anti-communist network. In 1953, Olin Xiem, Olin Yu's brother, was invited to become the prime minister of the state of Vietnam. The Phit Minh, supported by the Soviet Union, had recently defeated the French army and an agreement was reached to Switzerland to divide Vietnam into North and South. The US aimed to establish its influence in the South, and O Ning Xian was chosen as their candidate. In 1955, with the support of the US, O Ning Xian conducted a nationwide referendum to determine whether Vietnam should establish a monarchy or a republic. Encouraged by Madame your husband resorted to bribery and cheating to help cancel the monarchy and declare the establishment of the Republic of Vietnam. Olin Xian became the president and Madame Yu became the presidential advisor. Although Olin Yen was unmarried and lacked social skills, Madame Yu Known for her fluency in French and English, often fulfilled the role of a first lady, accompanying him to various events. As a family, Madame Yu and her husband moved into the presidential palace. Her beauty, fluency in English and France, and elegant style attracted attention and made her a prominent figure in international media. In 1957, Madame Yu advocated for the implementation of moral laws based on Catholicism. These laws included the prohibition of dancing, boxing, the voice, abortion, and contraception. She also worked towards closing brothels and eradicating opium smoking. Additionally, she played a leading role in shaping politics that favored Catholicism over Buddhism. Under her influence, policy and welfare benefits were primarily directed towards Catholics, and aid from the United States was often limited to Catholics only. While Catholicism had been introduced to Vietnam early on, the Buddhist population remained significantly larger in numbers. As a result of a policy favoring Catholicism and the marginalization of the Buddhist majority, frequent protests and resistance from the Buddhists arose. However, the ministry under the control of the regime often suppressed this protest through force. In 1963, during a protest, a Buddhist monk sat himself on fire in the middle of the city. Madame Yu callously referred to this act as a barbecue and offered to provide more fuel for other Buddhists while clapping in approval. She later claimed her words were inspired by an overheard conversation between two Americans blaming Americans' advice for her actions. Madame Yu's outspokenness and the questioning of Americans' motive irritated the US government. She openly criticized the Kennedy administration, referring to false brothers who didn't understand Olin Xiem's positions, indirectly targeting the White House. The Kennedy administration losing trust in Olin Xiem's ability to lead a fractured nation eventually allowed a coup against his government, resulting in his and his brother's death in November 1963. Following her husband's and brother's death, Madame Yu went into exile in Italy. She openly blamed the United States, calling the death murder with either official or an official blessing from the American government. During a news conference in November 1963, she demanded that those responsible for the cruel injustice be held accountable and made to pay for it. Less than three weeks later, Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, giving rise to various conspiracy theories that Madame Yu had orchestrated his killing in retaliation. In a condolence letter to Jacqueline Kennedy, she delivered a cutting line, Now you know what I feel. 
away. Unable to safely return to Vietnam, Madame Yuo spent the remainder of her life in exile as a widow recluse, residing in a 15-room villa near Rome. She maintained a low profile, living in seclusion and silence, and only granting interviews at a significant cost. In 1986, her parents were tragically found murdered in their home. Madame Yuo's brother was charged with their death. In April 2011, Madame Yuo died in Rome. Before her death, she was located by an academic named Monique Brinson Dama. Who initiated correspondence and later published the exchanges in the book *Finding the Dragon Lady*? During an appearance on the Daily Show on 2013 to promote her book, Dama revealed that it took a lot of effort to convince Madame Yu that she was not a secret government agent. When asked about her regrets, Madame Yu simply said she could have displayed more modesty.